Welcome back to Dylan with Sid Meier's Colonization, where we continue the colonization of the Americas as the French. Here we go with the ironworks. We're just going to need to ensure that we have the war supply to keep the tools and the musket industries running. Also train up a farmer here and gunning. We have one more spot. Let's do that. Ah, uh, only two. Too bad. Too bad indeed. I guess I can't do that. I'll send him down to Ironhold instead, and he'll become a fisherman as well. We've actually got a pretty good system of roads set up now so that we can go from Lake Erie to Gunny without going through Lumberton, and then we can much more easily go from, say, Safe Harbor to Gunny as well in only five moves instead of, which used to be a eight-move trip. And the Dutch are up to 22. They are accelerating their independence growth. Looks like the Iroquois are about to attack us again. Yep, we definitely need to dig in as much as we can here, but we pulled it off. We got them. Got a textile mill built in Proxima. Next up is going to be the cigar factory. More regulars added to the REF. Not a big deal. Let's dump this cargo overboard that we have in the privateer. I wonder if that's going to end his turn. No, it's not. Because I want to take down that galleon if I can pull it off. Let's give it a shot. Here we go. We have very, very good bonuses against it. And once again, we lost. Wonderful. We got a whole load of people to start training from Europe. We're finally in position for the first order colony. Let's set it up and let's call it, let's call it Orville. Farmer's going to do farmer stuff. That'll supply plenty of food for the ore miners. We'll get the first one set up immediately. So now we're producing 12 ore already without a road as well. It might be worthwhile sending some elder statesmen up here to increase our ore production. The first thing we're going to build up here is going to be a, I would build a stockade, but you need three people first. So I'm just going to leave it as is. We'll start working on the Starcade later. We require making an actual attack on the city of Orville. So let's see if the artillery will hold up. They should hold up. So we have a strength 15 versus a strength 4.5. There's a very, very low chance that we lose, but there is a chance that we lose. Let's see what happens. We got them. Good deal. Let's pick up a bunch of people to bring on back home. And now I'll pick up the gunsmith. And I'll train up some more ore miners as well. We won't actually be able to fill up all the holds of the merchant man, but that's okay. We've got enough cargo holds now that we should be good probably until the revolution kicks off. And we just train up that second gunsmith at the same time. Very good indeed. So now we're making 32 muskets per turn, which is going to consume quite a few of the 48 tools that we produce. But we are about to finish the ironworks in not too long. 94 hammers left, so it's about two turns. Three turns, actually, I think. No, two turns. So we have four additional free colonists to train up. One of them I'm going to send up to Gunny to become a soldier. Two of them I think I need to train into lumberjacks just because we need significantly more lumber production. But I do need to think about that. Okay, yeah, so I do need two more lumberjacks. I'm going to put the lumberjacks into the university. It's going to slow down much of our construction. But we have to simply deal with it, unfortunately. We'll set the free colonist up during lumber. The next free colonist I actually need to train up as a fisherman. So him I'll send over to... I think we're going to go Safe Harbor. It'll be closer to Lake Erie, which would be the place that you'll probably need to go. Because we'll have to set the lumberjacks up in Lake Erie pretty soon. So we got the free colonist doing his training under the fisherman. And we got our second ore miner in Oreville to set up on the hills. So now we're producing 22 ore per turn here. We'll be moving much of the army north to Orville to prepare for the assault on the Iroquois village. This village, interestingly enough, has lost enough people that they're down to being just alarmed. So they would probably stop attacking us, but we need to train our non-veterans anyway. And the easiest way to pull that off is just to attack the natives. There's yet another privateer that's probably English over by Ironhold. We'll see if we can't engage that with our frigate in a second. We got the fur factory built in Safe Harbor, very nice. So now we make plus 50% furs on top of the furs that we use, I mean plus 50% coats. So we use the same amount of furs, but we produce 50% more coats. Same thing works with like cloth and the other stuff. With the fur factory built, I think that we should transition over to first knocking out some wagon trains, because we need better logistics of course. And then after that we'll probably go into a fortress most likely. We finally have enough gold on hand to recruit some more expert ore miners and in France. So we'll bring them on back. 
I think I'll go ahead and leave my frigate positioned where he's at. The privateer is unlikely to cause any other harm. And I can simply move this merchant man far enough to the east that it shouldn't be a potential problem at all. Got another non-veteran Jagoon that I need to skill up. Move him up to Orville. On the next turn, we'll probably hit the native village once. We won't try to burn it down immediately. We'll just let it sit for a moment. But we do need to increase our ore production from Orville. So we'll have to move these pioneers onto the hills with some defensive cover, of course, if they can actually make it. <laughs> English and Dutch at war once again. Interesting. And instantaneously they sign a peace treaty. I do not know what they're doing exactly. Oh, Mr. Jagoon moved off the mountain. All right, all right. We got our next expert fisherman trained up. So we need to pull this one out. We'll be founding a fishing village with him. Same thing with this other fisherman that just got trained up. I need to go hunting for that privateer a little bit here, so we'll sweep west and see if we can spot it. Looks like we're probably going to be okay unless he's hiding over here. He might be able to get down and hit our shipping vessels pretty easily if he can slip to the north. Actually, <coughs> I'm actually not concerned with this Dragoon at this point. He is blocking our eventual colony spot, but it doesn't really matter which one we choose exactly. And that colony is temporary anyway. All the fishing villages will be abandoned when the war actually kicks off. The Dutch are actually accelerating their independence push. They're up to 23 out of 84. They don't even need half support for independence. They only need 40 colonists, which is pretty annoying. I'm pretty sure that we're going to beat them, though. We just need to get the non-veteran Jagoons put together, and then we're going to attack the natives. And, of course, the Iroquois make another surprise raid. But... This time we are fortified, so we should be alright. Nope, we got routed. Uh, there's an English privateer by Plymouth. We got an ironworks and iron hold. Fantastic. So with the ironworks built, we need to switch over to the fortress most likely. Let's go ahead and get that built. Somehow I was able to select a wagon chain to construct. Oh, never mind. I understand the issue. So we built a wagon train earlier in Safe Harbor. I don't yet have another colony to support another wagon train, so we're going to switch over to, I think, the fortress right now. And we'll work towards that. But we've got a whole bunch of ore miners that arrived from Europe. I think most of these are going to get trained into being farmers. And then we're going to... Where did he go? And then once we've got them trained up, we're actually going to build Farmville one more time. And Farmville will actually stay there. And it'll be a major food production site as well as a major horse production site because it'll have the food growth surplus to actually sustain the horse growth. So we're going to work on educating many of these free colonists to be farmers. We're going to have to split them up a good amount though. Many of these other expert ore miners are going to be soldiers however. And there was a galleon that I saw right there. Let's see if we can go around it. Mm, let's pull back. There's an enemy privateer up here somewhere. Let's pull back, let's hit the galleon. We have very good odds against it, but considering my local galleons, we're probably gonna lose. And what do you know? We lost again. There's gotta be some kind of like hidden galleon modifier, or maybe I'm just super unlucky. That English Jacoon moved back into the mountain, by the way. I'm not gonna bother with these two guys, it's not a big deal. I do think now is the time to hit the village, though. Let's, let's go ahead and bring them down if we can. Ooh, they're actually just armed braves, they're not mounted warriors. That's very good. So we have good, good odds. Not perfect odds, but good odds. And they hardened. Very nice. Let's go ahead and let's bring in the other non-veterans. And assault. Come on, come on. Nope. Too bad. Thinking about my ore production, I think I actually have enough ore production from Orville and my other colonies to fuel my tool and musket industry. I should have enough tools to build the fortresses that I need and then to build plenty of artilleries. But beyond that, I don't really have a great need for tools. I don't have any plan to build much in the satellite colonies. I'm just going to leave those alone. I'm just going to build artillery and the fortresses. That's about it. As well as an arsenal and gunny, of course, after the ironwork. But we don't have to worry too much about tools. If I opened another blacksmith shop in a different colony, then I would need more tools. But I think we're completely fine to sit back and then just focus on training our people up to become a proper standing army building Farmville, getting greater horse production, and building up some reserves of horses primarily, and then just declaring independence at that point. So I'm actually going to pull back this ore miner that I was planning on moving to this location. I'm going to pull him back. I'm going to pull back the pioneer as well. 
and the Dragoons. I'm going to have them stationed on top of the non-veterans. I don't want to waste attacks against Indian villages with veterans. I'd rather just use the veterans against the other units that come outside, which is exactly what we're going to do. We're going to assault these people right here. Let's see if we can bring them down. Very good. Gunsmith that we just received from Europe is going to go over to Gunny as well. The king is raising taxes, but we do not care. And I'm very, very interested in actually shooting that galleon with my frigate. We have enough coat production that is worthwhile, in my opinion, to grab the fur trader. Not the weaver, though. And we'll go ahead and pick up another ore miner and send off the merchant man. And we got an ironworks and gunning. Very good. Next up is going to be the arsenal. And that's going to enormously increase our musket production. Realistically, we probably don't need more than one arsenal. We chained up another fisherman and iron hold. So I'm going to pull out the teacher fisherman and have him go to one of the fishing villages. And we got our cigar factory in Proxima, as well as having trained potentially two lumberjacks. I know we trained at least one. Yes, we trained two lumberjacks so we can pull out the educators and then send them off to Lake Erie, I believe. And we got a fisherman educated in Safe Harbor. He's going to form the foundation of the fishing village just south of Safe Harbor. Proxima, now that we've finished the cigar factory, we're going to build a fortress. Yeah, I'm going to sink this galleon. So we have extremely good odds against it. There's no reason that we should lose this fight. And they evaded, of course. <laughs> Alright, our first fishermen are in position to build the initial fishing villages. We'll go ahead and set those up. for Detroit. <laughs> Let's call this Sushi City. Ah uh, yes, I had to build docks here. I forgot about that. Hmm. We'll just have to move some lumber in then. As well as potentially a carpenter or two. That's fine. The second fishing village, what should we call it? Call it... Salmon run. I'm going to pull one carpenter each from Gunny and Iron Hold to build the dock in the fishing villages temporarily. Our third gunsmith has arrived. Let's put him into the magazine. So now we make 48 muskets every turn. That's basically a soldier almost every single turn. The pioneers that are working all over Orville, we're going to send them towards the future. Oh, that's a mistake. I meant to send it southeast. I'm going to send them towards the future location of Farmville to get all these tiles actually plowed and everything. You know what, it's going to take so long to actually build the fishing villages, and I'm going to train some carpenters to do it for me. That way I won't have to actually pull out carpenters from the primary cities, I can just send them to the fishing villages. The Dutch are actually up to 24 colonists supporting independence now. Looks like the Iroquois are potentially going to make a raid. Nope, they ended their turn there, so they're unable to attack us going to take down that mounted warrior, or at least do our best to take him down. And we got routed. Uh, well, it happens. Let's see you take him down, please. And he got routed. Okay. How about one more? There's no way we can lose three in a row, right? There we go. We're going to... Ooh, there's actually a mounted warrior in that village. We'll take the shot. We need to, to upgrade our non-veterans. Hmm. 50 50 shot of success. Hey, they pulled it off. Good deal. I am going to need another carpenter in Lake Erie, actually. At least temporarily. I would like to move the lumberjacks there, but we don't have the food income to support another lumberjack here. So I might temporarily shut down fur production for the most part. So that's what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to move a lumberjack to Lumberton and then make a swap with the fur trapper. Move him, move the lumberjack onto his spot. And produce some lumber. This lumberjack is going to have to go to Lake Erie and replace the fur trapper up there. And then we will, of course, need to develop the surrounding lands further and ideally get a carpenter in there. That carpenter will be going to train up in probably Safe Harbor. We need to send another free colonist over to there. We need more wagon trains, so I'm going to switch off the fortresses to building wagon trains wherever possible. I believe I should be able to build probably two more. This extra fisherman, I can't do anything with him actually, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a temporary colony using him, and then build up to the wagon train limit while he exists. It's going to take a while before we get the docks set up, and we'll be building Farmville in not too long, so we should be able to build enough wagon trains to meet the limit that is given by the increase of having that troop there. So we should have enough colonies on hand to make this guy worthwhile keeping him where he's at. He won't actually get to really do anything, but it doesn't really matter. And we could actually use a warehouse in Oreville, considering how much ore we produce, but 
I think we'll be fine once we have enough wagon trains. I just need more wagon trains. Having a limit of one wagon train per colony is really not enough for me when I have such a distributed system of goods. Looking at our cotton supplies, we might actually be able to supply a third weaver as well, so it's something to consider. I don't believe we have the tobacco income to supply a third tobacconist, but a third weaver might be viable. They require making a surprise raid. I'm not sure they're hitting the settlement. They are hitting the settlement. Very good. So we have a ton of bonuses against those mounted warriors. We should not lose, but it is theoretically possible. Nope, we got them. Good job. Going to work towards artillery next. I think I'm going to have to switch back to wagon trains on Ironhold and or Proxima. We've got plenty of time to get the fortresses up and running. And we're still building towards the fortress in Safe Harbor, of course. There's that privateer I found you. Let's see if we can sink this bastard. We have very good odds. He does not have Francis Drake. And we damaged it. Very nice. They don't even have a dry dock still. We'll call this city Alabama, because it's the middle of nowhere. Nah, nah. Screw it. Let's call it Alabama. I am a Texan, by the way. It's not that uncommon for us Texans to make fun of Alabama. And the third fishing village, what shall we call it? Call it Hank Hill. Why not? We got some non-veteran Jagoons to test against the village. Let's do it. 50-50 shot. Let's go. Very good indeed. Looks like the English might be moving against the village as well, but I highly doubt it. The fur trappers with nothing to do are going to go over to Safe Harbor and produce some crosses. They might as well do something with their lives at the moment. We want to kind of squeeze as much as we can out of all of our colonists. Alright, horses are down to buying for two each. We need to buy quite a few horses, so I'm going to load up the merchant man with a bunch of horses and then send him on his way. The caravel is going to load up with one expert ore miner and send him on his way. We got Jean de Brebeuf, but I really am not too concerned about that. I think we have all the founding fathers that we really need. Ferdinand Magellan is actually kind of useful now. We'll take him for the faster naval unit movement and the decreased time to sail from the map edge to Europe. The other ones I don't care for, I don't need Bartolome de la Casas. All current Indian converts become free colonists, we don't have any at all. I don't want to take up arms, I have a standing army, and I don't want to trade with foreign colonies. With the education of our first farmer in Proxima in quite a while, I'm going to send him north to Farmville on the next turn. Might equip him with horses to make that trip, let's think about it. It's an English frigate sitting right outside of Proxima, we'll see if we can slip past him with the privateer. We did indeed. We could take a shot at it. I think we'd be on roughly equal footing. We'd be slightly ahead of it. I don't see much point in doing that when I could just attack with my regular frigate. So we're just going to move away from the English frigate instead. And we'll go hunting for some targets over here by Fort Nassau. And the Dutch are up to 25. They just need to get 15 more colonists supporting independence and they'll be granted independence. That might take 15 turns. It could take 30 turns. I'm not sure. It's been about two per turn, I think. So... There's a decent chance that we may not make it in time to beat them. Alright, with a carpenter trained up in Ironhold, I can send them over to the fishing villages. I've also got a carpenter trained up in Proxima, I believe it said. Yes, of course it always has trained such strange colonists. I'm certain it just goes down the list. I've also got a, another carpenter trained up in Safe Harbor, as well as a fisherman. So I can pull those extra guys out. With the construction of another wagon train in Proxima, we're going to switch over finally to fortress production, and we will not switch off until fortress production is done in Proxima. If we need to build more wagon trains, we'll probably do it in Safe Harbor once we get the fortress built there, and we'll continue to preserve iron hold for artillery production. Apparently, there were actually colonists on this privateer for some reason. I wonder how the hell I picked them up. I don't really remember exactly. Yeah, so that fur trader will go over to Safe Harbor to increase coat production. The ore miner will become a soldier, almost certainly. This frigate is annoying, so I'm going to take the shot with my regular frigate. He insists on sitting outside my dock and harassing my privateers. We knocked him out, sent him back to England. Very good indeed. He will no longer harass our privateers for at least probably 10 turns. Damn, the Dutch are up to 26. I think odds are pretty good that we won't beat them in time. But we'll see. I'll have to do a count of how many dragoons I have. Gonna go ahead and train up some more ore miners, send them back now, might as well. We got a merchant man waiting on standby to pick up anybody extra. We're kind of pushing the limit on our ability to make money, I guess. Now that we're focusing so heavily on bulls and muskets and not selling those things, 
as well as the lumber and food. We actually have so many shipping vessels that some of them can just hang out in Europe. So I actually need to swap the fishermen that are in the fishing villages for the carpenters, and then I need to dump just enough lumber to finish the dock. I don't see any point in doing anything else except maybe building a warehouse if I have to, but I don't think I'm going to bother doing that. Uh, Privateer has sighted an English galleon. Yet another galleon to lose against. At this point, I'm kind of like, I really shouldn't bother. <laughs> there has to be some kind of unseen modifier. That or I'm genuinely just really, really unlucky. You require making another attack against our Orville. They shouldn't have any issues getting killed. And indeed, they were murdered. Well, that was not murder, that was self-defense. Considering our consistent losses against galleons, I'm going to take the next shot using the frigate instead. We have pretty decent odds of bringing it down with a frigate. So hopefully, there we go. And we sunk it, very good. I'm always happy to sink my enemy's shipping vessels. Oh wow, that was a prime tobacco underneath Sushi City. In case any of y'all caught this, I need to fix the iron hold fisherman and the tobacco farmer to be correct, which is what I'm doing right now. And Gunny has their arsenal. Very good indeed. We're up to 72 muskets per turn. So with the addition of the huge goons that just got armed in Proxima, that puts us at, I believe, 21 soldiers total. We're probably going to need to push a little bit harder, up to 30 soldiers. The REF is getting pretty big, but they won't land all at once. They land in waves, so we should be able to take care of the waves individually, especially if we continue to grow colonists, produce muskets and horses, and arm more people, as well as build more artillery. I definitely want to declare before the Dutch declare independence. I think that's going to be like our time limit. We'll see how long it takes them to get close to independence, and once they get close enough, we should be ready, because we are growing very rapidly. We're actually growing so fast, the turns are taking increasingly more time for me. To actually go through and micromanage everything and decide where everything goes and move the wagon trains etc i developed a very complex network of inputs and outputs which is fun you know i'm not complaining about it it does take a little while though <laughs> and we're actually going to finish our first fortress on the next turn once i get the tools actually delivered to safe harbor there's prime cotton under that forest very cool i don't think we're going to make use of it though we might we might not, I'm not sure yet. I'll have to look into our cotton inputs. And Farmville is going down for the last time. There we go. In order to effectively work Farmville, we would need some elder statesmen if we wanted to go above population 5, which is a good question as to whether or not we would like to do that. The main point of Farmville is just to produce food as well as horses. Uh, in order to produce a bunch of horses, we're also going to need a warehouse. That is right. So Farmville actually ideally would be like a properly developed colony. To that end, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull one Elder Statesman from Gunny and send him over to Farmville, and he by himself should produce quite a few bells. We don't need to get Farmville above 50% or anything like that, we just need to get Farmville enough revolutionary support to maintain the colonists that it has without suffering from inefficient government. It's been quite a while since we worried about revolutionary support. We also need to get Farmville some carpenters as soon as they get done with the dock in the fishing villages. And we got some more Dragoons to practice with. Let's practice with them. Armed Braves versus Dragoons. Decent odds, decent odds. Hardened a veteran, amazing. And that village didn't go down immediately. I wonder if they actually regenerate people over time. If they regenerate people over time, this attack should not kill them, assuming that we successfully attack. Which we did not, okay. So after the construction of the arsenal, I don't believe that we need a fortress in Gunny. I highly doubt the RF is going to take the time to come and sail around the peninsula and land at Gunny. And even if they do land at Gunny, we will slaughter them on the mountainside, so I'm not concerned. What we're going to do instead is we're going to build a wagon train and two artillery. Once we got that wagon train, I might deeply consider just not having the fishing villages. Like, they're useful, but they're not that useful. I could easily repurpose those colonists into, say, elder statesmen for Farmville, carpenters, farmers, or soldiers. But at the same time, I've been spending time working down here, so maybe it's a sunk cost fallacy. The question, the real question is how much time we have remaining. It could be 20 turns, it could be 30 or 40 turns, I'm not sure. But we have basically until probably 1674 at the latest 
There is also another tactic wherein you allow the RUF to take a city, and then when you attack that city, you get either a bonus or a negative based on the revolutionary support in that city. So if Sushi City had 100% revolutionary support, and we attacked Sushi City, we would get plus 100% bonus with the attack. And if we don't go to Starcades in Sushi City or Hank Hill or anywhere else, the Arya won't get a defensive bonus. Of course, if we leave the city there and we don't upgrade the revolutionary support to say 100, the RUF would get a major bonus towards their strength if we were to attack the city while they were in control of it, I think. Well, no, I think it is if they attack us and we have and we have loyalists, they get a bonus. So in theory, we could produce a 100% bonus against Sushi City with a plus 50% attack bonus, and we could use artillery to do the attack. You know, I like that idea. I like the idea of leaving the fishing villages where they're at, developing their revolutionary support higher, getting more food from them, getting more colonists as a result, getting a larger army, and then potentially trapping the Arya in Sushi City. We can also position soldiers on this tile and this tile. Sushi City is the closest colony to where the Arya will probably come out of, which means that they're very likely to have to land on this tile, which is a force, and at that point they would have the option of either attacking Sushi City, and if we leave it undefended, they'll walk right in, or attacking Proxima. If we leave Sushi City undefended, they'd probably walk right in and then turn around and attack Proxima though, which is something to think about. If we play by the time limit of Dutch independence, I don't think we have time to build fortresses in Sushi City. I think we'll just leave the villages where they're at. We'll abandon them right before the revolution starts. We're not going to bother with the, keeping these two around. Salmon Run can probably stay, but this one, Sushi City and Hank Hill, are too dangerous to leave there. I want them to focus on attacking the extremely fortified cities. You know what? Thinking about it, I think that the RUF is going to move towards Sushi City, land on the forest tile, as long as we have a unit in both of these tiles, and then we can just slaughter them in the forest because we'll have Veteran, which is plus 50%, Attack Bonus, which is plus 50%, the Forest is another plus 50%, that makes us like, with a Continental Dragoon, which is the upgrade of the Veteran Dragoon, that gives us like 13.5 strength, versus a, a Royal Dragoon, which I think has 6 strength, or 5 strength, I'm not sure which, but those are pretty good odds, and if they do take Sushi City, as long as we have Revolutionary Support high enough, we'll just get an extra bonus attacking. And they won't have a stockade, because we're not going to build defenses in Sushi City. So I think we're fine leaving the villages where they're at. That's cool. We just need to make sure that we get some Elder Statesmen down there and pump up the numbers for the revolutionary support to 100%. So to ensure that happens, we're going to need to move an Elder Statesman in not too long. As soon as this build gets plowed, we can move down the Elder Statesman. Because I think I have... Yeah, I've got a Pioneer working on it right now. That sounds good to me. And by doing that, I don't lose all the effort I put into training the fishermen and stuff. We'll see if this uh, works out or not. And we got our first fortress built in Safe Harbor. Now I think that we might want to just build artillery. Let's go with that. But we also need to think carefully about our tool production because all of our tools and gunning are now getting converged directly into muskets and we're making a lot of muskets per turn. That leaves us with just 72 tools from Iron Hold. I think we've got enough tools. we got all the tools we need in Proxima for the Fortress. We should be able to produce enough tools, I think, that we can still build an artillery in the primary colonies every couple turns. We'll just have to find out. It. If necessary, we can just pause musket production if we really need more tools. I've almost developed the land as much as I need it developed. There's an armed brave here, which is not going to have the defenses of the village, which means that we would have an attack bonus against it. So it would be reasonable to attack with this non-veteran soldier. Let's give it a shot. We got him. We've got enough cotton production. I might be able to sustain some weavers. I'll bring them. Might as well. But other than that, I'm going to grab more ore miners to form an even larger army. Let's switch iron hold over to fortress production instead. We're going to fortify Proxima and iron hold. And I think that'll be good for fortifications. All other tools can go into finishing up development of the land and building artilleries. We can now abandon Alabama 
we have built the wagon chains that we need. We no longer need it wasting its time. The fisherman will be sent probably to salmon run. Thanks so much for watching Dealing With It. I'd really like to hear any feedback you have about the video in the comments below. All feedback is good feedback. If you like this video, leaving a like would help the video to reach other people that might also enjoy the video. If you'd like to see more, you can always subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one in episode 15.